Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC exists, Nigeria will never be a safe haven for financial crimes. No matter how fast they run or where they operate from, one day the law will catch up with them. You either turn a new leaf or find yourself in jail. The choice is yours. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Ego. My name is Aisha Gambari. With me on the program is Aisha Mohammed. Hello. Hi Aisha. Good evening, viewers, and thanks for allowing us to be part of your evening. Stay tuned. The program continues right after the break. FCC will get you anywhere, anytime. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is not relenting in its efforts at deepening cooperation between international stakeholders in the fight against organized crime. On our lineup today is a special interview with David Keta, a representative of the UK National Crime Agency. He spoke extensively about the synergy between the Commission and his agency. The trial of Imabong Akon Esunte, an accountant with the Nigerian Prison Service, and two others, Ulukolade Olabamiji, a businessman, and Mohammed Abdul Qadir, a banker accused of money laundering, has commenced. The commission also arraigns Justice Unuafe and his son, Omorigo Unuafe, before Justice Lambo Akombi of the Federal High Court Port Harcourt River State on a four counts charge bordering on obstruction, possession of fraudulent documents, and obtaining money by false pretense. Please stay tuned as the program continues after this timeout. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> I got a telephone call. Anytime I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Jehovah, my God. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Hey! Was you owe contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs. On pipe on water. I right. embezzled the money at the fear chief. You are supposed to first have a, a special man that you don't do of EMCC. I chose people who are doing with money to stop other people with money. EMCC. As soon as they captured them, threat to prison. Right? Yeah. Chief. Yeah. Jail. Jail. Ah! Are you there? Life are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. When other people are going to die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EMCC, I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. The trial of Imobong Akon Esunti, an accountant with the Nigerian Prison Service, and two others, Olukola Olabamiji, and a businessman, Mohammed Abdul Kadr, a banker, has commenced with the first prosecution witness telling the court how the prison accountants and her accomplices laundered funds from the Nigerian Prison Service into accounts of companies where she has interest. Golden Agu has more. Sini Omar, an assistant superintendent of police with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, while being led in evidence by the prosecuting counsel, Asher Larry Peters, told the courts that Esu Nte, 
used her position as prison accountant and connived with the other accused persons to launder money from the accounts of the Nigeria Prison Service into the accounts of three companies, namely Royal Mall Nigeria Limited, Transferas Ventures and ID Integrated Petroleum Products Limited in the guise of executing non-existent contracts. Esu Unte is said to have interests in all the companies. Omar Fada told the court that the first accused, Esu Unte, was specifically questioned on how over 100 million naira and another 90 million naira were lodged into those accounts in January and February 2014, respectively. When asked about the relationship between Esu Unte and the fifth accused person, Mohamed Abdukado, Omar said both conspired to open a corporate account for the first accused person in Heritage Bank in the name of ID Integrated Petroleum Products Limited with forged documents. According to him, the company's mandate card has the name of Esunte's nine-year-old daughter but with a photograph of an adult male, while the second mandate has a feminine name but a photograph of an adult male. The witness told the court that the Nigeria Police Service never had any contract with those companies to warrant the payments. Documents in support of these claims were tendered by the prosecution, but their admissibility was challenged by the defense counsel, Titus O. Asholu San, who asked the court for a trial within trial to determine whether the documents were voluntarily released to the prosecution. Justice Chuku adjourned the case to May 20 and 21, 2015, for continuation of trial. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> I got a telephone call. Every time I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Juva Magadam. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Hey! Was you all contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs. On pipe on water. I am right. the money. I the fear chief. You are supposed to fear fear for a special man that you don't know of EMCC. I chose to be doing the rule to stop the other people money. EMCC. As soon as they capture them, threat to prison. Yeah. Yeah. Chief. Jail. Jail. Ah. Are you? Life are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. We know that people are going to die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EMCC, I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Also arraigned by the commission is one Michael Ackman before Justice Kudira Jose of Lagos State High Court, sitting in Ikeja, Lagos. The accused person was arraigned on a one-count charge bordering on stealing, contrary to Section 185, subsection of the Criminal Laws of Lagos State, 2011. Akman was arrested following a petition by Won Kimson, a Vietnamese businessman who claimed that the suspect defrauded him of the sum of 8,000 United States dollars after failing to ship a consignment of cow horns he allegedly ordered and paid for. It was alleged that after collecting payments for the cow horns, Akman stopped communicating with the complainant. The defendant admitted collecting the money but did not fulfill the contractual obligations to the Vietnamese nor made any refund. When the charge was read to him, he pleaded not guilty. Justice Jose ordered that the defendant be remanded in Kirikiri Maximum Prison and adjourned the matter to June 18 and 22, 2015 for trial. Golden Argo reporting for the Eagle. <laughs> Thinking really hard about what truly matters 
Welcome back. Still on court matters, the EFCC is also prosecuting one Justice Onuafe and his son, Omorigo Onuafe, before Justice Lambo Akombi of the Federal High Court Port Harcourt River State on a four count charge bordering on obstruction, possession of fraudulent documents, and obtaining money by false pretense. Thelma Eke has more on this. Father and son were arrested by operatives of the commission following intelligence reports on their dubious lifestyle. The duo were found in possession of two exotic cars without documents to prove ownership of the vehicles. They also have a story building which is under construction in Delta State. They were arraigned by the commission after investigations established that the father and son are involved in internet fraud. They pleaded not guilty when the charges were read to them. Justice Akombi granted them bail in the sum of 500,000 naira with one shorty each in like sum. The matter has been adjourned to May 20, 2015 for trial. In a related development, the EFCC also arraigned Dixon Simon Obasi and Frank Emmanuel Ogun before Justice Binta Murtala Nyako of the Federal High Court McCordy on a three-count charge bordering on money laundering. Dixon and Frank were arrested following a complaint from one Fatima Justina Agada and Samuel Abuel that the duo conspired and fraudulently swapped their automated teller machine ATM cards in one of the old generation banks which they used to swindle them of several thousands of naira. The accused person, however, pleaded not guilty when the charges were read to them. Thelma A.K. reporting for The Eagle. FCC will get you anywhere, anytime. You're still watching the program, The Eagle. Among international law enforcement agencies, the EFCC remains a beautiful bride most sought after by all. Kamili Gebi in our next report brings you a chronicle of EFCC's relationship with foreign partners. The report. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has enjoyed tremendous support in the areas of investigation and training of its personnel, among other support from foreign law enforcement agencies. The Commission's relationship with these agencies dates back to the time of Nuhri Badu as chairman of the EFCC. He was instrumental in establishing relationships with the Federal Bureau of Investigations, FBI, and the London Metropolitan Police, amongst others. These relationships, however, suffered a great setback when he was removed in controversial circumstances in 2007. But in 2012, when Ibrahim Lamorde became the chairman of the EFCC, reforms were initiated and executed to change the way the Commission is perceived. Since then, the Commission's relationship with international partners has improved dramatically. The direct fallout is fresh windows of support that have come in the form of joint operations, training opportunities, and offer of specialized equipment. Recently, the French embassy in Nigeria, led by the police attaché, Eric Bonichan, donated eight laptops to the commission as part of its support to strengthening the commission's quest to rid the country of economic and financial crimes. While handing over the laptops, Eric, who spoke through an interpreter, said although the laptops were not enough, the gesture demonstrates the implicit confidence and support of the French government for the EFCC in the fight against corruption in Nigeria. The Embassy of France, we have the honor to present eight laptops and eight houses to the EFCC. It is not enough, but the of the of our Apart from the French Embassy, the Metropolitan Police also visited the Commission. Jonathan Benton, head, Proceeds of International Corruption Unit, who led the delegation, said they were at the Commission to further strengthen the existing relationship with EFCC in the area of investigation. The Met Police, 
is known to have supported the commission in various investigations, one of which is that of former governor of Delta State, James Ibori, who is serving a 13-year jail term in London. We have had a long-standing relationship and um, I, I, I always look forward to meeting uh, uh, Chairman Lamorde, be it this is my first visit to, um, to Nigeria, but in many of the international forums that we meet at and discuss corruption cases with our counterparts. We, we, um, we must remember that we can only ever do this together. We can't do it in isolation. The international financial centres do play a part, and London is an international financial centre. The way money flows work and the way money is moved and where people like to buy houses and, 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 and spend their holidays and send their children to school. Um, London is one of those places in the UK and we have to accept that. And it, it is important we play our part in fighting corruption. In December 2014, the Western Australia Police signed a memorandum of understanding with the EFCC to work together to combat internet fraud and money laundering. This partnership led to the arrest of one Oro Jesse Omoko, a 28-year-old undergraduate of University of Ibadan, who allegedly obtained the sum of 90,000 US dollars from one Jetty Jacob, an Australian based in Johannesburg, South Africa, in a fake romance scam. The victim later died in mysterious circumstances. Other foreign agencies with which the Commission enjoys robust partnership include the Global Fund, U.S. Federal Trade Commission, U.S. Postal Inspection Service, the World Bank, African Development Bank, British Serious Fraud Office, Economic Crimes Network, and Australia Federal Police. The Commission has also signed an agreement for the establishment of the Economic Crime Agency Network comprising London Police, Corrupt Practices Investigation Bureau of Singapore, European Anti-Fraud Office, Hong Kong's Independent Commission Against Corruption, the US FBI, the Malaysia Anti-Corruption Commission, New Zealand Serious Fraud Office, the Indonesia Corruption Eradication Commission, as well as the UK National Crime Agency. David Cater is with the UK National Crime Agency. He spoke about his agency's collaboration with the EFCC. We've had a long-standing relationship, um, which involves mutual support from operations um, uh, in, the, in both the UK and Nigeria, both agencies assisting each other. Um, and that's developed over the years uh, into uh, a relationship which now also includes working on some active projects where uh, NTA is, is actively supporting um, EFCC in, in some specific operations and uh, helping to develop its capability. How long has this relationship been? The overall relationship has been running for many years more than 10, 10 years plus. Um, the current project that I'm referring to has been running for a little over a year. But uh, that's just one small element of, 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 a, of a constant ongoing relationship between the two agencies. Of what benefit is this relationship to both agencies? The benefit um, to, um, to NTA is, is that, um, as, as you're probably aware, there's quite a lot of um, crime in Nigeria that impacts on the UK. So um, we get benefit by working with EFCC to try to um, investigate some of these criminals and some of the um, different crime that's impacting on the UK. Um, and uh, hopefully, conversely, EFCC gets benefit from um, a similar arrangement with us, uh, the, the UK, sharing uh, assistance with um, criminal intelligence and um, uh, uh, case, case, case work, assisting on cases, um, as well as hopefully benefiting from some of the skills and experience that, that we can bring to, uh, to assist in developing the capability of the Commission. How fruitful has this relationship been? Uh, it's been very fruitful. Um, on a regular basis we have inquiries, some, some of which could be quite simple basic checks that are being done by the UK for, for you guys at EFCC and similarly um, for EFCC for us in the UK. Um, similar ch simple checks around banks and, and, and identity and that kind of thing. Uh, right through to some um, quite uh, sophisticated investigations involving extradition requests and that kind of thing where we're actually getting successful results at um, 
either prosecuting people or um, extraditing people to the UK, or just assisting with uh, gathering evidence and um, developing casework. So, a full range. Does the EFCC have the expertise your agency can rely on? The, the operational officers, the investigators of the Commission, um, are, uh, as I say, they're, they're well trained. Um, they've, they've got good experience in terms of the, the legislation and the, the powers of the, of the Commission that you have here. Um, as, and they're very well motivated and they're keen to learn. So if we come along as an international partner and can provide assistance, um, or additional mentoring support to develop what they can do, then, um, then they're very, very well motivated, very keen to take that on and, and we see the benefit in the way that they, they're then able to work and use those skills on their own when, when we're not necessarily working directly with them. <laughs>